All right, so today uh, what you're gonna do is a little at-home uh, experiment with osmosis, all right? So what we're really gonna be studying here is the movement of water uh, across a membrane. And so what you're going to do is create sort of an artificial cell, all right, like this. Uh, and so again, for cells, we have the outer membrane that separate the cytoplasm from the environment then you also have sub-environments inside the cell. So in eukaryotic cells, we have membranes, creating the nuclear envelope and the mitochondria. There's spaces within the mitochondria that can have different concentrations of molecules and ions, uh, and, and vesicles and so forth. The membrane is a barrier. So in this case, for the, for the membrane, what you're using is uh, something, looks like plastic film like this. It's called dialysis tubing. And so I've cut little pieces of dialysis tubing and they should be put uh, into your kit. And so what you're gonna do is use that tubing as uh, an artificial membrane. Uh, the tubing has little holes punctured into it uh, of a specific size. So certain types of molecules can get through it and other types of molecules cannot get through it, just like a, a cell membrane. The membrane has other properties because it's phospholipids and proteins. This is a much more simplistic form, strictly based on size. So what you're gonna do today is create little artificial cells and you're gonna load them with sugar solutions. So you're going to need um, just plain old sugar, the type of sugar that you would use to put in coffee, uh, uh, and that's it. So nothing uh, expensive or, or harmful. You're gonna need your balance in order to weigh uh, the sugar, uh, and you're gonna need something to calculate with because you're gonna have to do some molar uh, calculations before you make them up. You'll need some containers to measure the liquid in. So you had your little cups that, that came in the lab. You had your uh, other little graduated containers that also came in with your lab kit. And you'll need some kind of cup. These cups could be um, generic. They don't have to be marked in any kind of gradient. They could be Dixie cups. They could be uh, like a regular glass. They're just going to have pure water in them and that's it. And all you're going to do is add the little bags to them with sugar. So it's a completely sort of harmless thing, but you'll need a couple of those containers too. And so then we can just kind of get started. So in the lab, what you're gonna to have to do, the first thing is I'm going to set up for you um, to make molar solutions. Now there's gonna be a separate lab on making molar solutions um, and a worksheet that you're gonna do. So I'll have a video explanation of how to do these kinds of calculations. So I'm not gonna do that here right now. Um, but what you can see is you're gonna to have to have this equation, uh, grams equal molecular weight times volume times the molar concentration. And in this lab, in the osmosis lab, uh, what you're gonna have to do is make up certain molar solutions. So I will say make up a one molar solution, say make up a 0.5 molar solution, make up the 0.2 molar solution. Now they're gonna be made up with sugar, which is sucrose. So I'll give you the molecular weight, which is uh, 342 grams per mole. So that means I'd have to weigh out 342 grams, actually weigh it, this 342 grams, add that to a liter. So the volume is always gonna be in liters. Uh, and that would give me a one molar solution. Uh, we're, we're not gonna make up that much. We don't need a whole liter. You're gonna make up 100 milliliters. So the thing is, since this volume is always in liters and you're only gonna make up 100 milliliters, that's only a tenth, right, of a liter. So it's 0 0.1 liters. The one thing when you do this calculation, it'll be in the other lab, you have to make sure you convert all your volumes to liters. Uh, and then you're gonna have to put in whatever molar concentration I tell you. So if it's a one molar or 0.2 molar or 0.6, whatever it happens to be, that's the one you're gonna input here. And then you just simply solve it. So in this particular lab, I'm gonna walk through one of these with you. The rest you're gonna have to kind of do on your own. It's the exact same overall procedure, except you're gonna have different sugar solutions to experiment with. So the idea is this. Um, First, I have to make up my sugar solution. So I need 100 milliliters of water. All right, so uh, I'm gonna use, I'll say this here to, to measure it out. Um, goes up to 50 milliliters. So we have uh, 45 measured actually on here, but then there are two more lines. So that would go up to 50. So I'm gonna bring this up to 50 mils. Try to read it at eye level. You'll get the most accurate reading that way. Dump it into you know whatever whatever kind of cup you have. It doesn't have to be an actual beaker. It could be anything. Uh, and here we go. There's another. Another 50 milliliters. It needs a tiny bit more. This should be as precise as you can be with it, um, and you can use your little pipettes if you need to adjust it or add a little bit more to it. So do that and add that to your 
mixing solution. Now we need the sugar. Right? So what you're going to do is first do your calculation. So whatever the calculation is for, let's say uh, in this case I, I did one here for a uh, 0 0.5 molar solution, 0.5 molar. I already did the calculation, it says I need 17.1 grams. So I get my sugar, you could probably just use a spoon, not really at home, and you'll need your wave boat. You don't want to just put it right onto your balance. So have your little digital balance that you've got in your kit, make sure it's flat on the table, turn it on, wait for it to set itself up, then put your wave boat on it, then go ahead and zero it, so hit tear, All right, and then we can go ahead and get 17 grams of sugar. There. It's actually easier with a, with a spoon. I'm using a laboratory um, spatula and it's very thin, so it's actually more difficult for me to do it. 13, 15, now that I'm getting close, I'm gonna just do smaller amounts. sugar uh, sucrose. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add it to my beaker that has, or cup or whatever it is that you have that has the 100 milliliters of water. And what you should see is that it doesn't, it doesn't immediately dissolve. It just sits on the bottom. So if you go to take this solution out of here to make your little bags, it's not going to be the right concentration. The top here is mostly water with a little bit of sugar in it and the bottom is incredibly concentrated. So you need to mix this. This is the one thing uh, in a lab that I find a lot of times people just forget to do. It's incredibly simple. It's just mix it. Just make sure that whatever it is, salt, sugar, or whatever types of chemical that you're adding is completely dissolved. Um, so you might put it in a container with a cap on it to stir it. You might actually have to put it um, in a uh, shaker or a shaker table or on a stirrer. Sometimes things take quite a long time to actually go into solution. It really just depends on their solubility uh, and the molar concentration of the solution you're making. So you really need to wait until it's completely dissolved before you can do anything else. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute while uh, that continues to dissolve and I'll start to prep my little bags. So what you should have again are the dialysis tubing and what I have here is I, I already put the tubing in just some plain water. It's just regular water. Um, there's nothing special about it. It's just to get it wet. You can see when the tubing is dry it's almost like it's like plastic, okay, like a little plastic ribbon, but it's actually a bag. It's actually a tube. Uh, and so what you need to do is first off to create the bag, seal one of the ends. And it's best to do it while it's wet, not when it's dry. So make sure you wet it first. Take one end and twist it like this. Okay, so a few times. Then in your kit, you should have rubber bands. What you need to do is, I guess I should have said you need a pair of scissors. So you should also have a pair of scissors cut your rubber band in two pieces. Nice. You'll need both of them. Take one piece, tie it around the end. Okay, like that. So you have that end sealed off. You can double knot it if you want. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's a good idea. You don't want everything to, to leak out. Okay, now that end is sealed. What you need to do is open up the other end. Now, be difficult to open up just like a plastic bag um, so uh, if you wet it put it in your little bit of water it becomes then very easy to open up so you're gonna rub this together in your fingers open it up and you're creating a little bag here now my solution say is dissolved I'm gonna add 15 milliliters to this so I'm gonna use my all right and your pipette that you have calibrated to three milliliters. So that means I'd have to do this five times to the three milliliter mark uh, to get 15 mils. The exact amount, or, or the amount, is not, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly 15 mils. That's the guideline. So you need to find the opening. Sometimes that's the hardest part, um, is to get it open the first time. You're gonna insert this into the bag and then release that liquid. So that's my first three mils. In. And the bag will start opening up more as you do this. Three, four, that's 12 mils. So I'm going to go into 
to, to 15 try not to I pulled this a little too whoop so you can see so this just can happen so if this happens to you see and you mess it up it's not a problem okay you have a lot of liquid here so just go ahead and dump it out I'm readjusting because I don't know that the size of your tubes they may have been cut a little too short for you uh, and now uh, you find it difficult to work with but if that's the case it's fine take the tube open it back up again go ahead and repeat one two three four five okay so that's 15 mils three mils each time I'm gonna do now what I want to do is seal this bag so I should have my other end right of the rubber band I'm going to take this and twist it at the tip leave a little bit of air so leave a little bit of space there because if some if the water volume changes which is what I'm going to get to explaining what's going to happen here then uh, we have some room uh, inside the little bag so that the gases uh, in the air can be displaced with water so I shut this you can double tie it again if you want and that's it so now I have my little bag you can Tidy it up if you want. Um, you can snip these things off. You can shorten this up a little bit. You don't have to do that. You can if you want. What you need to do now is you need to weigh this. Right? So get your balance, get your weigh boat, put it on here, and then weigh that bag. So what you're weighing is the dialysis tubing, the rubber band, the sugar, and the water. All those things are, are there. And you're gonna write that weight down. That's gonna be your initial weight for whatever the molar concentration is. So say for the for me, that's the 0.5 molar solution. That's what I'm gonna do. The next part of the experiment is I'm gonna get a cup, but I'm just gonna have water. The exact volume of water doesn't matter. It should be the same kind of water though you made. So don't use spring water for one and tap water for another. If you use spring water for everything, that's fine. If you use tap water for everything, that's fine. Now you'll take your bag, okay? And you, after weighing it and writing that down, you're gonna just drop the bag into the beaker of water and let it sit there for 30 minutes, okay? So for a half an hour. So what you've done is, you can see the, the overview here, the osmosis slab. You're going to be told molar solutions to make, right? You have to do the calculations. That's the first part. There should be a worksheet that you do on molar calculations before doing this lab. If you haven't done it yet, then you need to do that first or else you won't know how to do these. Uh, then you can actually make the solution. That means just weighing out sugar and adding it to water. That's all you have to do. Then you're gonna transfer that sugar into the little bag. So first you have to get the dialysis tubing, seal it, pipette the liquid into the bag, and then reseal the bag. Okay, so you have your little tube. Then you have to weigh it and write that down. Make sure you write down exactly how much it weighs. You put it into the beaker of water like this. You wait 30 minutes, and after 30 minutes, so we'll pretend the time has passed, you remove it. It's a good idea to blot it. So what that means is, I didn't set up a paper towel. You have some paper towels some sort, and you're just gonna kind of get the excess water that's on the outside, so if water's kind of trapped in these little ends, you just kind of want to make sure it's not dripping off that. And then you re-weigh it, and then you write that down, and you have a second weight. What is going on in this lab? So what's the idea of it? The idea is that water can move across cell membranes, and it's gonna always move to an area where water itself is in a lower concentration. So Water, like all molecules, are going to, is going to move from high to low concentration of itself. Right? And for water, for other things we just call it diffusion, and for water we call it osmosis, but it's still diffusion, but diffusion of water. And in this case, we're actually going to measure the movement of water across the membrane. So if you remember from the pipetting lab, you weighed water. One gram of water was equal to one milliliter. So we can weigh this. The only thing that's gonna change is the water weight. The little dialysis tube isn't gonna change its weight, the rubber band isn't gonna change its weight, and the sugar in there, it's not pen it cannot penetrate the little holes in the dialysis bag, so the sugar can't leave the bag. The only thing that can move either into the bag or come out of it is water. And so the water weight is what will change, or can change, and that's the experiment. You're trying to find out, does changing the sugar concentration affect the movement of water? 
maybe it has no effect at all, and we try all these different concentrations, and you see no difference. Or you see a difference, and afterward, it changes. It may be less, or it may be more. Again, that's the idea. You're going to eventually calculate the actual difference, and then a percent change, and then that's what you're going to report. So there's going to be a little write-up and some calculations of this. It's all, that stuff will all be explained on your worksheet, kind of where to put it in. If you looked in your um, traditional lab manual, in the osmosis lab, there will, there's a table, and this will be the same kind of table that's on your worksheet, except it'll be modified um, with different concentrations. But the idea is you'll have the initial weight, the final weight, the difference in weight, and then you will be calculating a change in mass, so how much that changes, in, in percentage, so we can actually compare them between the molar concentrations. And that's pretty much it. So you'll have to repeat what I just did several times, one time for each molar concentration. If you don't have the dialysis tubing uh, at home, then when you would come in for lab, you need to let me know so you can pick up another one or two pieces if for some reason they didn't get in your kit. They will stick together, so you should check them and make sure you have enough pieces. Um, you may have all the pieces you need, they're just kind of stuck to each other. So just kind of make sure you check them out. They should be in your kit inside one of those bigger centrifuge tubes. That's where the dialysis tubing is, so you'll find it in there. Um, and that's how to do the, your osmosis lab at home. Okay, so it's not that complicated. Um, you're just kind of putting, making up a solution, putting the solution into a bag, weighing it, waiting a little while while it sits in water, and then re-weighing it. And then you have a bunch of calculations to do. So hopefully that is clear. Uh, if it isn't, then you can send me emails and I'll, I'll try to clear it up for you.